We are ready now to treat our second patient. It will be a mesio-occlusal cavity on the first premolar. We insert the rubber dam before removing the amalgam restoration so that the patient will not swallow any amalgam powder or uh, mercury vapors. The amalgam is removed first with a carbide burr with high water volumes to make sure we will not evaporate mercury from the amalgam. Then we proceed with the beveling of occlusal and gingival margins. We see the prepared cavity with discolored but clean tissue. We insert now a sectional metal matrix which is stabilized with a special ring placed above the wedge so that we have a perfect adaptation of the matrix but also a separation, a good separation of the two T's. We first etch enamel for about 15 seconds before placing the etchant also over dentin surfaces for another 15 seconds. Then we thoroughly rinse the etchant and remove cautiously the excess of water to avoid dehydration of etched dentin. We can then apply the adhesive system here, prime and bond anti, which we apply copiously over all surfaces. We let the adhesive penetrate the tissue before evaporating the solvent and line curing the adhesive. Then we start with the filling of the cavity, building up first the proximal ridge. This will be performed in a few increments, the first one being placed directly on the gingival margin. We light cure each increment for about 10 seconds since the proximal ridge is built up with enamel. This is our second increment. We use the fine sculpting instrument to level the ridge and create the occlusal embrasure. We can then start with the dentin buildup, following exactly the same technique which we have seen for anterior restorations. This means using dentin to replace missing dentin and enamel to replace missing enamel. This is what we call the natural layering concept. After applying dentin over the bottom of the cavity, we pre-sculpt this layer so that we create the space needed to create a nice enamel anatomy. We need to apply some more dentin to support the palatinal cusp. We need to create about one millimeter of space for the last enamel layer so that we respect anatomical thickness of both tissues. We push the material first with a condenser and bring the material where we need it. We also use the micro brush as a placement instrument. It helps to move the material where we want sometimes more easily than with a hand instrument which tends to stick a little bit to the material. 
We like your dentin for 40 seconds since the material is more opaque and have a darker color. We inject now directly from the compule the enamel and try first to cover the entire cavity and the margins with us trying to sculpt the surface. We use now the small part of the sculpting instrument to create the central fissure. We insert a small amount of intensive color in the depth of the fissure to get the more natural effect. We try to simulate little imperfections which we can observe in nature, such as these colored fissures. We must remove the excess of color with the microbrush before light curing this intensive uh, color. Then we can directly start with the finishing of the restoration, first in the proximal area and the marginal ridge, and then the occlusal margins. A strip is finally inserted in the proximal area to smooth the gingival margin. You see the completed restoration, which actually looks darker and more translucent compared to dehydrated tissues, but this is absolutely normal. Thanks to a precise layering technique, a professional instrumentation and creative sculpting approach, we could achieve here an optimal anatomical and functional result with Ceramics Duo.